All right, gonna show you the self-righteousness of sinless perfectionism. The thing about sinless perfectionism, the heresy of sinless perfectionism, is what it really comes down to is a place of self-righteousness. People who teach sinless perfectionism, they don't want to admit before God that they're a sinner saved by the grace of God. Okay. Now, there is a changed life that comes after your salvation. The Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up and gets sin out of your life. That is true. However, first of all, it's not done to be saved or to stay saved. That is a heresy. That's work salvation. Okay. Jonah 3.10. Again, Jonah 3.10 proves that obedience to, to uh, or basically living holiness, living in holiness is work salvation. You can read Jonah 3.10. Okay. Uh, living, you don't have to stop sinning to be saved. That is a heresy, okay? And the sinless perfection heretics, who also teach the heresy of conditional security, they always have to teach that basically you have you have a part of your salvation that you know you have to think you're not that bad basically. And uh, again, Revelation fifteen four, it's clear that God is the only one that's holy, and you're not holy without Jesus Christ and His righteousness given to you at the cross, okay? But the thing about sinless perfection is, is that they have to think, well, I'm not that bad. I'm a pretty good person. Just like an atheist. You see, sinless perfectionism is atheistic philosophy. You have to think, well, I'm not that bad. You know, I can make it to heaven on my own. I may, I may not be that bad, you know. I mean, you know, I'm pretty good. Look how good I am. You know, like Ephesians 2.10 says, let me just uh, make sure I am. There we go. Make sure I'm on the right tab. Because the thing about sinless perfectionism is that you can boast about your self-righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of your righteousness, not of your holiness, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay? When you think you're, when you've convinced yourself that you're sinlessly perfect, you can boast in pride, boast in self-righteousness. You can see the Pharisee in Luke chapter 18, uh, verses 9 to 14. The Pharisee is prideful. He was saying, I thank, you know, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, I'm not as other sinners are. You know, comes from a place of pride. They're Pharisees. That's all they are. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 26. Uh, it says to declare, Romans three twenty six to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, not our own, his righteousness, that he might be the just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 27, where is boasting then? Okay. Again, when you're when you think you're, you're saved by your holiness and your self-righteousness and you think you're sinlessly perfect, you can boast. But where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Okay, And I'm going to be going through a video by a heretic named Watchman D. I did uh, go back and forth with him in the comments of one of his live streams. And, you know, to my shame, I did compromise a little bit. I did kind of, you know, I did compromise. I'll, I'll, I'll admit to that. I, I, need, I do have a habit of sometimes compromising when I'm in a certain situation. Um, but, you know, it's important to take a strong stance against this satanic heresy of sinless perfectionism. And I'm going to be going through a video because, again, what it really comes down to is that if you think you're sinlessly perfect, you can become prideful and you can boast. And you can come before God and say, well, look how good I am, you know. You read Matthew chapter 15, verses 21. Let me turn to that verse. Leaving no stone unturned. Matthew 15, verse 21 to... 28, okay, Jesus calls a woman a dog, okay, and instead of arguing with Jesus, the woman just says, truth, Lord, you know, but I guarantee you, these sinless perfection heretics, when Jesus, if Jesus were to call them a dog and say, you're a dirty, filthy sinner, you're a dog, they would probably say, well, I, I'm, I'm not that bad, you know, again, it's atheistic philosophy, that's what it comes down to, you talk to any atheist out there, they'll say, I'm a good person, I'm not that bad, they're no different than atheists, but on this thing of, because what, because what they always do is they, they always have to say that Romans chapter 7 is before Paul's salvation. Because again, they, they, can't get, they can't get low enough to just break their pride and get before a holy, righteous God and say, I'm a dirty, filthy piece of, piece of garbage that does not deserve salvation, that, that doesn't deserve Jesus Christ dying for my sins, that deserves hellfire. God, please save me. You call, you call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10 9 to 13. You have godly sorrow for your sins, repentance of sins. First or Second Corinthians 7, 8 to 11. They can't stand that. They can't stand the thought of being a dirty, rotten sinner before God. They have to, it, because it hurts their self-righteousness. Self-righteousness hurts their pride. And they'll deny it. Oh, we're not self-righteous. Yeah, you are. You're saving yourself. And they can't stand the thought of being nothing without Jesus Christ. They have to think they have a part in their salvation. And I'm going to show you this video by Watchman D where he is 
twisting Romans chapter 7 and saying that it was before Paul's salvation. They always have to do this. They have to make it before Paul's salvation. Because they can't stand, again, they can't stand it being told that they're sinners. You, you, I mean, you tell them they're sinners, you tell them they're wicked, the devils come out of them and they just get real mad. But gonna play the video. It's only it's only a six minute video too, by the way, it's not that long. Well, I was alive without the law once. He's talking about when he was a child before the commandment came. But when the commandment came, sin revived. It came alive and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Do you see this? This is not the experience of a born again believer. He's gone back in time now. All right, he's gone back and he's telling you what his experience was uh, from the time when he was a child and, and when he first came into the commandment, when the, or should I say when the commandment first came to him, probably like around the time of his bar mitzvah or whatever, when a Jewish boy becomes a man, okay? Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful, that it might become obvious to him that he is breaking the law of God, okay? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin, okay? You see what I'm saying? We were sold under sin. Uh, we were sold under sin? Uh, Paul's not speaking in past tense. He says that the law is part carnal, but I am carnal. Sorry, the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, present tense. But you see, he made it in the past tense. You see, we were sold under sin. No, Paul's talking present tense, I am carnal. You know? See, the sinless perfectionists are liars. They always have to twist the scriptures. Before. Now, remember, you got to remember the context here. How is he talking? Now, he's talking as he, if he's in the present tense right now. But we know that he's not really in the present tense because of what he said up here. What, what he's talking as if he's in the present tense, but he's not in the present tense. Um, it's plain English. I am carnal, soul under sin. It's plain English. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, and so on. So he's going back to the time when he was in the flesh, before he was a spiritual man, through Jesus Christ. And he says, but now are we delivered from the law? But then he goes back. He goes back. He says, but sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Do you see this? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law for I... Uh, so he's going back again. He's going back again. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So he's going back again. Yeah, because the law of God's written in your hearts. Romans chapter 2, verses 14 to 15 talks about that. You know, even as Gentiles, the law of God's written in our hearts, even when we we're lost. You know, it's natural to know, you know, that certain things are wrong. You know, like adultery or or stealing or fornication or incest or whatever because the law is written in our hearts that's what Paul's talking about there and he says for I was alive once without the law when he was a child but when the commandment came sin revived and I died so we know from looking at the context here that he is still speaking of his experience before Christ people and this is where a lot of people get it wrong and think that oh I'm the Romans wretch just like Paul no Paul himself after Christ was not the Romans wretch and that's the whole you see thing. again He's prideful. He does, does he does not want to admit that he is basically nothing without Jesus Christ. Comes to a place of pride. He's self righteous, just like a Pharisee in Luke 18, the parable there. Point in him writing about it is to tell you how to free, how to be freed from it, which he started in Romans 6 by saying to be baptized in Jesus Christ with a. Now you see again, he teaches the false gospel of baptismal regeneration, you know, because he um, is a full on work salvation. It's penitent heart, of course, and you will be for he that is dead is freed from sin not captive by sin or sold under sin yeah, you're free from sin you're free from the penalty of sin the wages of sin is death Romans 6 talks about that the wages of sin is death you're free from the penalty of sin but it doesn't mean you're sinlessly perfect in this life you know that's that's satanic philosophy you see true satanism is thinking you can be holy like God you read Isaiah chapter 14 let me turn there you see this is why I say a sinless perfectionism is a form of satanism because they think they, they want to be holy just like God. They want to become like God. That's what, it, that's what it really comes down to. They'll deny it, but that's what it really comes down to. They want to be holy just like God. Because again, Revelation 15.4 says, Thou art the only one that's holy. Pre paraphrasing, of course. But God is, is the only one that's holy. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Now look at verse 13. 
Now compare this to what the sinless, sinless, the lying sinless perfection heretics will say. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay? Just like, just like these sinless perfection heretics. You see, I can be holy just like God. I can be sinlessly perfect. I can be like the most high. You know, I can ascend to heaven by my own holiness and my self-righteousness. Just like Satan. They're of their father, they're, they're of their father Satan. They're of their father the devil. That's why I say sinless perfectionism is satanic. It's, a, it's Satanism. It's atheistic philosophy, and it comes from Satanism. Thinking you can be sinless and perfect just like God. And again, they'll deny it. They'll say, well, well we don't believe that. Yeah, you do. If you think you can be holy and sinless, you are teaching Satanism. Because that's exactly what Satan thought. You know, a good way to describe this is the five prides of Satan. Satan was prideful. Pride and self-righteousness come from Satan. Uh, verse 15. And, and here's obviously the end result of a lot of these sinless perfection heretics. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They think they can earn salvation by their righteousness. They're going to be brought down to hell. You know, your righteousness is filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6. You know, you can't earn, you know, nothing you do can can please God. Okay, nothing you do, you may think you're, you're holy and perfect. Again, it just comes back to the whole thing of atheistic philosophy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect, but, well, they, they, think, they think they are perfect, but I'm not like, oops, sorry, hit the mic there. I'm not like so-and-so. You know, I'm not like, you know, I'm not like these other sinners over here. They're Pharisees. It's, it's atheism. It's like, that's why I say it's atheistic philosophy, but continuing see right here in this scripture this is past tense okay this is before christ for that which i do i allow not it's not past tense it's present tense i am carnal sold under sin but i would that do i not but what i hate that do i if then i do that which i would not i can send unto the law that it is good now then it is no more that i that do it but sin that dwelleth in me for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for and that's something these guys can't stand the thought of in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing you see, they think they're good. They think their flesh is good. They can't stand the thought. Uh, this is why, again, they can't stand it. You know, the, the thought of the, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You see, Paul was humble. Paul knew that, you know, he, you know, he tried to live a holy, sanctified life, but Paul knew he was a wretch. You know, he was nothing without Jesus Christ. You see, these sinless perfection heretics are trying to nullify the sacrifice of Jesus Christ through their atheistic philosophy of sinless perfectionism. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. This is a man who has not been born of the Spirit yet. This is a man who is... Um, no, it's, it's, do, you not, do you not notice the fact that Romans 7, he's always talking in present tense. All, like, when he's talking about his struggle with sin, that is in me, that is in my flesh, do all no good thing. You know, He's talking in present tense. He's not, he's not referring to past tense events. You see, it's right, the scriptures, right, this is how false prophets always do this. The scriptures right there in front of you, but then they deny it. Acknowledging that it is sin in him. No good thing dwells in his flesh because sin is in there dwelling in him. Okay? And he sees it happening and it's constantly pulling him into captivity because he's not been freed from sin yet. And he says, You see, there's a buzzword, free from sin. So you're sinlessly perfect when you're freed from sin. You're freed from the penalty of sin, but you're not sinlessly perfect. Okay? And again, after this, I'm going to get into some scriptures that prove that, uh, which is ridiculous. And the reason why I am kind of harsh is it wasn't like the last video where I was just being carnal. Um, sinless perfections, and the reason why I'm being hard against this heresy is because I prove that it's a satanic heresy. It's full on Satanism. So I'm going to be pretty hard against it. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Has anybody been there? This is, the, this is a picture of a man who is hungering and thirsting after righteousness. As I was for years sitting in a Baptist church, I could not accept that Jesus came and died on the cross just to leave me in my sins. Come on, y'all. That's not what happened. Look what he says. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. What does he mean? That he can go on just sinning because it's no longer him that do it? No. He's saying that there is his, in his, the law of his mind, it hates the sin that's in him, but he keeps being pulled into captivity. Let him go on. He'll explain this. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Praise the Lord. And I've been there. Before I was saved and born, repented, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I delighted after the law of God, but I could not do the good which I wished to do, just as Paul is saying here, because I was not yet freed from my sins. And he says right here, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, okay? Keep this in memory that he's saying this, okay? Because remember back there in Romans 6, Romans 6, he that is dead is freed from sin. So what he's talking about here is a person who is not yet... Again, you're free from the penalty of sin. Hey, free from sin does not mean you're sinlessly perfect, just you know, so you can become your own God, essentially. Again, it's Satan's first lie told Eve, you shall be as gods, in Genesis 3. So again, I'm hard against this heresy because it's full-on Satanism. Ye shall be as gods, in Genesis 3. It is Satanism. It's full-on Satanic philosophy. They want to be holy just like God. They want to be sinless just like God. It's wicked. Dead, a person who has not yet obeyed that form of doctrine, which we saw in Romans 6, is repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? O wretched man that I am, present tense. Okay, and again, these guys are prideful. They cannot stand the thought of, O wretched man that I am. You see, I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm pretty good, actually. I'm a, I'm a good person. You, you, again, you hear that from atheists. They'll say, oh, I'm a good person. I'm not that bad. For me from the body of this death. This is a saying taken right out of the teachings of Cicero, who was pro council in Tarsus, which is Paul's hometown. Uh, um, you know, why is Paul saying the body of this death? Again, Romans chapter 6. Because again, what is the wages of sin? Because here's the thing. If you're sinlessly perfect, then why do you experience physical death? Kind of an interesting question. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you're sinlessly perfect, then why do you even experience physical death? Kind of a problem there. Now, very shortly before Paul was born, okay? I don't know, a century or so. Maybe less than a century. I think about 75 years, if I remember right. So so what that what this is is a literary device that Cicero, the proconsul, invented for lawyers to use and they even use these pillars today yep um they use these pillars uh today in taught in law school to speak to people about like a past event as if it's in the present to draw them into the story like they would do like in a perry mason uh where is that in scripture see he's going to uh, extra biblical sources to prove scripture that's what catholics do it's roman this is roman catholicism uh show or something i don't know that's a very old show for young people to even know what it is but he would say now i'm the killer okay he's the, this is the lawyer in court trying to convince the jury and he's taking them through the story you know i'm the killer and i'm going down the hall with a knife and i see two innocent people in the bed and i start stabbing them now he's speaking as though it's the present tense but he's speaking of a past event that happened in order to draw the jury into the story to convince to the story to convince them and that's what paul's been doing this whole time with the wretched man thing you see going on here it's a literary device invented by Cicero. And in fact, Wretched Man, if you go look it up on the internet, it is a quote, Eisen. I think it's amazing. And so therefore, he is the inventor of this literary device that Paul is indeed using here in Romans 7. Um, notice how he didn't read verse 25. Let me show you what verse 25 says, because verse 25 refutes his whole argument. Uh, verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the law, with the mind, I myself may serve the law of God. You can't do that as a lost person. Okay? But with the flesh, the law of sin. He's still struggling with sin. But notice that. I myself may ser I myself serve the law of God. Again, you can't, you, a lost person can't do that. So if Paul was lost, if Paul was speaking about his lost life, why is he talking about serving the law of God? He's speaking about his his saved life and his struggle with sin. See, that's why he wouldn't read verse 25, because it destroys his whole argument. It's ridiculous. Uh, and an honest thing of having a, a sinful flesh, I'm going to cover a couple scriptures here. Galatians 5, verses 16 to 17. Okay, Because you do have two natures. Contrary to what sinless perfection heretics will say, you do have two natures. Uh, Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you can't, cannot do the things that you would. You know, like Paul said in Romans 7. That I do, sorry, that I do not, which, let me just go to the verse. Romans 7, let me just go to the verse. 
You say, if then that I do, which I would not, I consent unto the law that it's good. I'm oh, sorry, that wasn't the verse. Uh, sorry, here it is. Uh, Romans seven nineteen. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would, I not that I do. Not good at reading on a computer. You know, evil which I would not that I do. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Okay? The flesh lusts against the spirit. It, it's a struggle there. It's a constant struggle between the sinful flesh and the spirit. But again, sinless perfection heretics have no knowledge of that. Because they can't, because again, they can't, they can't, they just can't lower their pride to get down before God and say, yeah, I'm a dirty sinner. I need Jesus Christ. I'm nothing without him. And again, you say, oh, why are you being so harsh? Because sinless perfectionism is, fu is full on Satanism. Okay. I'm going to show you that. Genesis chapter three. And this is not just a, this is not meant to be a rebuke to a watchman D. This is just in general, why sinless perfectionism is Satanism. I'm just using him as an example. That's all. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Genesis 3, 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Satan's first lie, he told Adam and Eve, ye shall be as gods. Okay? Just like how sinless perfection heretics say, oh yeah, I can be, I can be sinless, I can be just like the Most High, I can be, I can be holy just like God. It's sat Satanist philosophy. But on the thing of uh, being sinlessly perfect, some scriptures going to go through some scriptures that refute that, because that proved that it's atheistic philosophy. It's full on Satanism, and how he wouldn't, how the sinless perfection, uh, Watchman D, how he wouldn't read verse twenty five because it destroys his whole argument. Uh, Ecclesiastes seven twenty. Here's a verse they don't like. Uh, For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There's not a just man that does that. Okay. 1 Kings 8, 46. If they sin against me, for there is no man that sinneth not. And it goes down there. Uh, 2 Chronicles 6, 36. If they sin against me, for there is no man which sinneth not. Again, there's no man that sinneth not. Uh, here's, a, here's a really good one to use against these guys. Proverbs 20, verse 9. Who can say that I have made? Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Who can say it? Nobody can. Again, Revelation fifteen four. God's the only one that's holy. Who can say I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. You can't say that. Uh, where was that verse? Sorry, there was a couple of those scriptures. Of course, Romans chapter five verses uh, twelve to nineteen talks about how. You know, you have a, you're given a sinful nature from Adam. And again, that's another passage these heretics don't like. Because pretty much any passage that just destroys their self-righteousness, they don't like. Uh, where was that verse of scripture? Uh, sorry, there's a verse of scripture I was thinking of. Trying to, trying to remember where it was. Uh, I think it was... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Psalms... I think it might have been Psalms 51. Oops, went the wrong one there. Let me just make sure. So I, I just got done doing a really long video earlier. I just, my brain's kind of a little messed up right now. It's near the end of the day too, so I'm just kind of brain shutting down. Uh, Psalms 51 verse 5, I think it is. Here's a good one. Psalms 51 5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay, babies are not held accountable. I don't believe babies are sinners in the sense that they're held accountable to the law. They can't, they can't be condemned against the law because they don't, they don't understand the law yet. Okay, but there is, you know, you are born in a sinful human race. I'll put it that way. The, the human race is sinful. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, there's Job 14.4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. I can't, there's, there's a really good verse in Psalms. I just can't totally remember where it is, though. I think it is. Is it? Uh, yeah, Job 15, 14. It's another good one. What is a man that he should be clean? He that uh, is born of woman, that he should be righteous. Again, what is a man that he should be clean? He that is born of woman. You're not clean without Jesus Christ. Uh trying to remember when that verse is I, I can't see I just can't seem to remember where that verse is I just 
weird slip my mind. I know it's somewhere in Psalms, I just can't totally remember where it is. Uh, let, me just, let me just search the thing up, actually. Because I, I, I don't have the best memory, I have to just write stuff down. Uh, just, so this isn't going as planned. Uh, yeah, it's Psalms 130, verse 3. That's, that's the one I was looking for. If thou, Lord, shall mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? You can't stand without Jesus Christ. Who can stand? And I can't, of course, they'll, they'll say, well, we don't believe you're saved without Jesus Christ. But you're saying you can be holy just like God. Essentially, that's what it comes down to. They'll deny it, but that's what it comes down to. Okay? It's, again, full on sat Satanist philosophy. But again, who shall stand? You know, not one. Again, who can say that I've made my heart pure from sin? Paraphrasing, of course, Proverbs uh, 29, or Proverbs chapter 20, verse 9. I'll just give proper thing there. But again, you know, sinless perfectionism is a satanic heresy. And uh, people who teach sinless perfection, it, it, this, it always comes down to a thing of pride. And again, it wasn't specifically against Watchman D. This was just simply against the heresy of sinless perfection. I'm just using him as an example, basically. Uh, but it's satanic. And they, they just don't want to lower their pride and get down before a holy, righteous God and admit, yeah, I'm a dirty, wretched sinner, saved by God's grace. Okay? It's God's grace. Your faith, okay, there's repentance of sins there. Don't deny, I don't deny repentance. I'm not an easy believer, it's heretic. But you live in a body of sin. You know, you're a sinner. That's why Jesus Christ had to save you. The wage of sin is death. You know, and, and really what it comes down to is that if you can't admit before God that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, or wretched man that I am, you're lost because you're still in self-righteousness. You have not given up that pride and self-righteousness that says, oh, I can be just like God. I can be holy just like God. Again, I keep saying this, but it's full-on atheistic philosophy. You still have the same mindset as an atheist that I had when I was an atheist before I left the sci-fi cult as an, of, of atheism. So don't be deceived by the heresy of sinless perfectionism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.